see Ricca here up front leading TC. Now in TC, the new Hyundai Elantra in is dominant. Jeff Ricca sweeps the weekend. My name is Jeff Ricca. I'm the owner of Gen Racer and Ricca Autosport. And I'm a professional race car driver in TC America and a team owner. With our business with aftermarket parts sales online, we thought that a platform that was needed during the time was a rear-wheel drive two-liter turbo chassis that would be great for the aftermarket scene. And that's exactly when the 2010 Hyundai Genesis Coupe was released in the United States. So we jumped on that opportunity, and from there we started building our, our product lines along with our partnerships with other aftermarket companies to uh, bring aftermarket parts, performance parts for that chassis. And then from there, uh, we just built our relationship with Hyundai and with the end brand that they released. It was for us a, a great opportunity to jump on and, and bring more diversity to our company. So working with Hyundai USA, we got a Veloster N. Working with the Series SRO, we were commanded to be the official homologator and builder for that chassis to run in that class. And from there, building more cars. Now we're here with the Elantra N. So the Elantra N works very well in the TC class because the TC is a dedicated either front wheel drive or wheel drive class that usually nets around 270 to 310 horsepower. And it's a touring car, meaning it is a production based class with production based cars that are used as street cars, but also could be turned into race cars, netting around 300 horsepower in these chassis. So starting to talk a little bit about what we do with the street car to make it a race car. It's actually not a lot we change. We work a lot with the factory Hyundai N components, especially the electronic system. We do not touch any of the electronic systems because they work well. So a lot of their features that they have are really derived from racing. This is why the Hyundai N product works so well as a race car. From you know, their N mode, from their N, N mode exhaust, their ELSD N curve, they call it. There's a lot of features on the street car that Hyundai uses that are branded on the N that actually have a race philosophy behind them. Little things that we might touch upon is we tune the electronic ECU and we also change the electronic limited slip differential ECU. Other than that, factory ABS system, all the body modules are factory. We actually use the factory tire pressure monitoring system too, because that works very well in the car. Just change the rear wing with a tunable TCR wing and we do some brake ducts. But overall, the uh, exterior of the car isn't really touched upon because A, the rules don't want us to change anything like that, but the factory design of the car is very aerodynamic. There's really no need to put a splitter on this thing. There's no need to do anything extravagant in the front to you know, get more grip or, or downforce. The DCT, we don't touch anything with a dual clutch wet transmission. Um, that's actually an untuned item and we don't actually uh, do any type of any modifications to it. A lot of the end features that are great for the street and even better on the track is uh, the ability to change the maps to do an end mode or a custom mode. And that custom mode allows us to fine tune the, the electronic steering, fine tune our maps for the electronic stability control and the ability to turn off trash control. Utilizing the end features and the end modes gives us a lot of good performance from a streetcar and on the racetrack. Can we do whatever we want? There is a set of guideline rules that SRO has. SRO has something called homologation. And a lot of people ask, what is homologation? Homologation is actually a document that a manufacturer will then supply to the race series. And this document is close to 200 pages and it shows everything that's on this car and what it's being raced as. There's no gray areas on what one part can be changed from another part. If we wanted to make any changes on that, we would actually have to go through paperwork to make that approval by the series to use that one change. It may be a, a different manufacturer rotor that we want to change, or the manufacturer made a, a facelift and they want to do something different on the front bumper. All right, so let's talk about the season so far. 
and uh, our debut of the Elantra N in the TC class. Going into the start of the season, we were down to the wire, getting the build completed and making the first event. We actually missed the BOP test back in February because we were still waiting on a bunch of parts like the KW suspension system, and we were waiting on the radiator and the intercooler that still were not being built or in time. We actually scrambled, got the parts in before leaving to go to Sonoma in March. And that's where we just cross our fingers to say, hey, I hope everything works and let's go across the country and start racing this thing. We get to Sonoma and it's dominant. Right out of the box, every session, we are on top of the charts. Even in the rain, we actually went so fast, we were faster than TCX, which is a class above us that makes more power than us. The series was kind of surprised, but they were very receptive to you know, what we could do for changes to make it slower, you could say, for to get the car within the class limits. We ended up getting the car somewhat in a, in a window, but we did win both races that weekend and went too fast. <laughs> we uh, had like 11 second lead on both races, but we also had some issues too. With any new car, there's, there are issues. The fuel system is actually a little bit different than the Veloster and we run ATL 80 liter fuel cells in, in these cars. Well, the EVAP system, which we still utilize in both the Veloster and the Elantra, has a different plumbing system, and we were not aware of that. That being said, when we filled the fuel up to its capacity for races, on deceleration, the EVAP system was sucking in fuel from the charcoal canister, and we were dumping an enormous amount of fuel into the intake chamber which then caused it to be very rich. Still got through the races, winning both races, didn't think anything of an issue. We get to New Orleans, the next round, and we noticed that in practice one, that the car is burning oil. We weren't too concerned about it, but we still were you know, keeping an eye on that. We did fix the EVAP system, so we didn't have any more fuel being burnt on deceleration. But as the sessions you know, progressed that weekend and we got to practice two, we noticed that the catch can was being filled with oil. And when we pulled off the intake manifold, the in intake manifold was completely filled with oil. Turns out we ran so much fuel into the motor that weren't, wasn't getting burnt, it actually washed the cylinder walls to a point when we did a compression test, we severely damaged the motor and we were burning oil regularly. So we bring actually our street car to the races and we bring that as a spare car because it's more feasible to take a part off a car that um, is there as whole than just you know stocking our trailers with, uh, with all these spare parts knowing that what will and will not break. So we ended up taking the streetcar motor out that night before qualifying and putting it into our race car. In the race we ended up winning overall in our class on both races. So we left that weekend with two wins, plus the two wins we we're in the, the first two rounds at Sonoma. So we were leading the series. I actually had to skip the Circuit of Americas round five and six because it was an overlaid event with the Nürburgring 24 hours. And I teamed up with Hyundai USA and Hyundai Global to run with them for the 24 hour race in a Hyundai i30N VT2 car. So I ended up not getting any points for that event. So that put me back from first in the class to second, and then going into Virginia round uh, seven and eight, we won every practice. We were on pole again for our first race, and we were leading about like two seconds after they did our BOP set changes of reducing power on the, on the car, adding more weight, adding more ride height. And then uh, our first mechanical issue, and that is an intercooler piping popped off. As simple as it is, no matter how tight we got the coupler, it just, with, with all the heat and being on track, expanding and contrasting, it popped off. We came at the pit and I went from first to last, repaired it, went back out, and it was just, we couldn't get any farther than sixth place. Thought we had it all squared away um, that night. The next day we had our round eight, the exact thing happened again in race two, but just a different coupler. It just moved down away. Now in third place in points, 
second in manufacturer's points and second in team points. And, you know, there's no margin for error now. With all the issues we had, it still feels so great that we won both Sonoma and NOLA rounds sweeping the weekend on a brand new chassis. And, and, and the reason behind that is, you know, there is minimal stuff that we needed to do. I mean, there is, uh, besides, you know, a couple adjustments there and there, since our knowledge from the Veloster moved over to this chassis and the Hyundai platform just out of the box is really good to work with. It was so easy just to, just to get the car up to speed. It was minimal effort to get the lap times needed the tire degradation is so minimal, and it's really only because the chassis is so easy to work on, and it's developed to be a race car for the street, nonetheless. So, all right, it is the end of the season, and let's talk about what happened the second half. That is our 2023 TC America Manufacturers Championship car. That's the car that gave us the win for Hyundai. The best part is. We did it in style. We had amazing last three rounds. Road America, we kind of knew that we we're gonna do pretty well there because a car, low drag, long wheelbase, it's just something that that track really likes to favor. We ended up P1 in race one by the slimmest of margins. And then race two was a P2, which was still good. Closed the gap to what we needed to for our manufacturer's championship, team championship, and driver's championship. The turning point of the entire season was Sebring. Sebring, we went there knowing that usually we struggle at. And it was actually the opposite. <laughs> and it was our competitors that struggled. That worked out well for us because we had a pole on both races and both races P1s. That allowed us to really close the gap, actually be on top for the manufacturers and the teams. We just now to go into Indy knowing that we need to be on the top step to secure those championships. And we did race one and in Indy, and it wasn't until the restart after an incident that we were able to get into the lead and win our class, which then officially secured as champions in the TC America Manufacturers Championship. That then also set us up for race two, where we just needed to finish the race to allow for the team championship that netted us a championship in both TC America teams and manufacturers championship. To work with a manufacturer, to bring them a manufacturers championship is priceless. And that's something that is just very important to us, very important to Hyundai. And showing that in the paddock, the fans is awesome. I really appreciate, you know, you guys watching this. I'm grateful that you see that we're using a street car and bringing it so easily to a race car and working with such a, a great company that put a good presence in the United States as a, a motorsport leader. And uh, if you have any questions, you always comment in the video below, but otherwise I'll see you guys at the racetrack.